What's going on everybody? It's Justin Gazaba and this is Living and Moving to Seattle, Washington. This is the channel you want to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We give you all the nitty gritty details about living, working, eat, sleep, play right here in the Seattle metro area. Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, Kirkland, Kent, Renton, everywhere in between. Uh, this is a channel for you. Uh, we're helping people make this move, come out here uh, to the Seattle area all the time. You can hit us up, shoot me a text, shoot me a, uh, you know, a message, schedule some time with me on my calendar, whatever you gotta do. We love chatting with people and helping them make this move. In this video, we're gonna talk about Seattle versus Portland. Now, maybe, you know, gosh, a lot of people come out here, they come out here in August, they come out here in July, they fall in love with the weather, and they're gonna make a move out here. A lot of folks, they got a job transfer, Boeing, Microsoft, Nintendo, Disney, uh, Amazon, you know, all the big names, they're gonna make a job transfer and come out this way and wanna know what is going on in Seattle. Uh, there's a lot of companies down in Portland too, so people are trying to make that choice. Do I move to Portland? or do I come up into Seattle? And every once in a while, uh, somebody actually makes that move down to California from here uh, and takes a big hit. And so in this video, uh, California aside, um, we are just gonna talk about Portland and Seattle and some of the key differences to think about. And, you know, I probably should make a video, you know, Silicon Valley versus, uh, versus Seattle because I had a friend move down uh, for a job down there, but didn't realize what was gonna happen with the tax structure and income taxes. And even though they got a bump on paper, it looked good on paper, uh, they took a hit because of cost of living and, uh, uh, and taxes, and they're actually keeping less money, even though technically they're making more. So in this video, we're just gonna talk about Seattle and Portland and kind of go over the same details because you could move up here and maybe you keep a little bit more money in your pocket by doing so, but maybe you don't. So let's get into it right now. We are gonna start with the home prices. Now, when we look at Seattle and Portland, we know that Portland's got all these rivers, Seattle's got the Puget Sound, right? So there is water surrounding us all over the place. A thing, something that people don't necessarily think about when we talk about the city of Seattle proper, we are looking at about 83.78, if you see me looking down, I'm just checking my notes, 83.78 square miles, okay? So that's the, the, uh, the isthmus that is Seattle, right? We got water on both sides. It's, it's like a narrow, narrow bit, small city mileage wise, right? If we look at Portland, not quite twice the land mass of Seattle, 45, excuse me, 145 square miles, plus or minus, I didn't write down the decimal. So 145 square miles down in Portland, that means that they are covering a larger, larger land mass. And if you look at Portland on the map, uh, technically the city of Portland is kind of some hinterland, some, some pretty far away from town. So when we look at these numbers, in my brain, I think it's skewed, right? Because if you're gonna live in Portland, you're gonna live in Gresham, you're gonna live downtown, you're gonna live Northeast Portland, you're gonna live in the city of Pearl District, wherever you're gonna live, it's gonna be in town Portland. It's probably not gonna be way out, way out uh, uh, in that, what, what, what I would refer to as the hinterland, right? Out, it's gonna be a lot more uh, rural and suburban there, uh, but they count that in their in their square miles of the city of Portland. So we have to think about that when we go to compare apples to apples because Seattle, they're in the city of Seattle, Seattle proper. There is some neighborhoods that feel a little suburban, uh, but there's not really any kind of rural part of the city of Seattle. The city of Seattle is just that isthmus, right? So. 83 square miles, almost 84, versus 145 square miles the city of Portland. Okay, so now when we talk about housing prices, we gotta think about what that mileage compression does to prices when you're, when you're focused in on a more narrow area because the median home price in Seattle, filming of this video, right? It's uh, uh, sitting by, it's the 17th of May, uh, Constitution Day uh, for those folks out there that celebrate. Um, $984,863 is the median home price 
here in Seattle. That's just under a million dollars for a home here in Seattle. That's your median, that's the middle. That means there's some that are less and some that are more. City of Seattle, right? When we look at Portland, now remember, we're almost twice, twice the landmass down there when we think about the city of Portland. It's not, I, it's not me saying that, they say that. They're the ones that drew the map, not me. Uh, 600,254. We're talking about almost $400,000 less for the median home price in Portland, Oregon. Now, I, I, I know I keep bouncing back to this because the, the wider you go, right? If you change that you know, city of to the general metro area and we start including Kent and Auburn and, and these areas, that our price is gonna come down significantly, right? But we are talking explicitly about what we know is the city of Seattle and what they call the city of Portland. So very different prices, very, very almost $400,000 difference, $384,609 difference in prices. So, okay, so now we know that there's a significant difference in pricing between the median home and uh, between Seattle and Portland. Like I said, you could live a little bit further out and get yourself down into Auburn or into Kent, uh, even Des Moines. Uh, you could go a little bit further north into Shoreline and that spread changes. So if you're still thinking like, based on housing prices alone, that you should choose one versus the other, if you're choosing an asset class uh, based on appreciation, right? If, if both areas increase at 5%, you have an asset increasing, $600,000 increasing at 5% versus a million dollars increasing at 5%, there, there tends to be a, a, um, a variation of that, right? And so not every, not every home increases at the same rate, but those are the historical averages, right? So, so let's talk about next about income. So for the Seattle metro area, Seattle, 94,000. Portland, 78,000. So we're talking about 20, 20,000 or so difference, 80 or uh, 15,000, bad math, 16,000, there we go. Uh, difference in income. So maybe you feel like, shoot, man, I can make $16,000 less and spend $400,000 less and live down in Portland. And that'd be great, but here's the deal. You gotta think about taxes because yeah, we have, we have pro high property tax here in Seattle. So does Oregon. Oregon has high property tax. Oregon also has income tax. Seattle does not have income tax. So your money is your money to keep. Now the difference again is Seattle is gonna have, or Portland's gonna have about a 10% income tax. Comes off the top of your income. It's part of the state tax. You know, Seattle doesn't do income tax. Washington State doesn't do income tax. But Seattle does have a sales tax, right? So we have about a 10, 10.1% sales tax. So if you're thinking financially and you wanna be financially conscious, right? There's, there's things that you can do. You can buy stuff that's less expensive. You can buy groceries that are off brand. You can, whatever, you know, you can buy clothes in Oregon when you go down to Portland whatever, you know, there's ways to mitigate and go, you know, I had a friend that worked for Nordstrom's for a while and he went up into Canada and bought his clothes in Canada. I don't know what he did about duty tax or anything like that, but the difference between currency and taxes and everything else, it was a killer steal, right? So you got to know there's a difference between property tax, income tax, and sales tax, because that's going to dictate how much money you actually get to keep in your pocket. And that's gonna make a big deal, right? And that's why I was in the beginning of the video saying, hey, my friend moved down, took a job in California, makes more money on paper, but she gets a lot more money in her savings account, right? Uh, because those costs of living are such and the taxes are such that it works out that way. Let's talk about the weather. Both are rainy, wet, foggy places between Seattle and Portland. Now, I was just talking about getting ready for the hiking season this year, you know, and the, and the weather, we have a, had a pretty wet April and May here in Seattle. Uh, we're waiting for, hopefully that means less wildfires here. At this time, there's already wildfires down in California. We haven't seen that smoke come up yet, but we're gonna get, you know, a month and a half, somewhere between a month and a half to three months of glorious sunshine in the Pacific Northwest is how that teases out. If you look, at the difference just in rainfall. 35 inches annually here in Seattle, 43 
in Portland. So it rains more down in Portland than it does here in Seattle. Uh, both are rainy, cloudy places, but if you're, if you're, you know, if you're looking at the, by the numbers and you want to avoid rain, you just cross Portland off your list. If you want to avoid rain, you probably avoid most of the Pacific Northwest, move to Arizona, because um, that's less rain there. Uh, even I think New York rains technically more than Seattle. We just get this crazy marine layer uh, that comes in. So uh, pretty much, pretty much 10 inches of rain difference going to be, uh, you know, negligible for you to actually notice in your day to day life. But those are the numbers, right? Let's talk about traffic. So when we look at the traffic system in Portland, it's a larger landmass area. They have all those bridges because of the river, probably got to cross three bridges just to get anywhere you're going. Um, you know, one thing is, 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 you know, you don't pay any tolls on those bridges. And here, if you're going to cross uh, uh, some of the bridges, you're going to pay some tolls. Narrows Bridge, uh, 520, you're going to pay tolls for that. You're not going to pay that down in, in Portland. Uh, but the, they're, they're number 10 on the list for, for worst traffic. And Seattle's number six. Uh, Seattle's pretty terrible. Seattle built a highway and then put a building on top of it so they can't go any wider. Right? The convention center just blocks that off. Um, so insofar as traffic, because we're on that isthmus, north and south is really easy. East to west is hard because we've got all these lakes in the way. Uh, makes that difficult. That puts us at, at uh, uh, number six. Um, and we become kind of um, not necessarily landlocked, but we're locked in by water. We can't east west is hard here. So, so number six. So one of the things that I think is funny about Portland is it's kind of seen as, as Seattle's you know weird little brother. They have the you know keep Portland weird. I don't know who coined that first. If it was I think Austin, Texas says keep Austin weird. I think they stole that from Portland or vice versa. Um, as I lean over, I'm, I'm talking, to, I'm talking to Chase to see if he knows, but doesn't know. Um, we can search the internet. We could Google that for you. But both Seattle and Portland are going to have homeless issues, issues with homelessness, people living on the streets, campers, tents, and all that stuff, which is, which is really sad. And we just, you know, year after year, we see that getting more difficult and more difficult. Okay, let's compare the job opportunities from Seattle to Portland. So. In Seattle, we've got Boeing, Amazon, Microsoft, Disney, Tableau, Salesforce. Tableau and Salesforce kind of combine forces. Um, who else is here? SpaceX, uh, tons and tons, Zappos, uh, Zulily, tons and tons and tons of, of, of tech companies here. Uh, some you know manufacturing companies like Boeing still here. I'm sure they have other businesses too, but that's just fun for me. Um, and they have a lot of service industry jobs, hotels and stuff like that. So one of the variations in, in median in income is also the jobs available, right? Uh, if you can telecommute, you could, you know, if you telecommute, you could live down in Portland, save yourself some bucks, but make some of that Seattle money, right? So that's the idea. Uh, healthcare comparison, both, uh, you know, Seattle is kind of a big healthcare hub. Lots of, lots of high quality award-winning hospitals here. Um, research centers um, that are all all here and you know a lot of people from out of state come to Seattle the Seattle area for that for that health care Portland has less options and still not as many options if you're pursuing uh, a medical degree right so UW medical is, is kind of the premier uh, educator here in in the area um, social scene if we talk about the social scene both have great bars and restaurants uh, Portland's pretty easy to get around. Um, spent some time downtown there, hanging out. It's it's easy to, easy to get around Portland and get into spots. Seattle's a little more fragmented. If you're in Capitol Hill, you're hanging out on Capitol Hill. If you're downtown, you're hanging out downtown. Rarely would you hit up you know Capitol Hill downtown and Ballard all on the same night. That would be an epic epic run. And congratulations to you if if uh, uh, if you're able to pull that one off. It's a that's a big day. Both are great for act outdoor activities, sailing, hiking, backpacking, uh, getting out into the wilderness. Really, really great, easy for that uh, here. Pacific Northwest lifestyle feeds both of those. Insofar as Portland, you can get to the ocean fairly quickly. In Seattle, it's about two and a half hour drive. So again, with those outdoor activities, really, really easy, easy to get to. Um, and and both, both have their, you know, like I said, shops, restaurants, bars, and breweries. 
kind of their own unique nightlife uh, to get around and, and go out and do uh, those types of things. So I really hope that gives you an idea when it comes to income potential, you know, taxes, uh, living expenses, thinking about not just like on paper what your uh, income is going to look like, but what that tax is going to look like, sales tax, property tax, and uh, income tax, right? The opportunities here in Seattle uh, just are more than, than what we've seen on paper, at least down in Portland, and pricing is always part of that, right? So when you go to an area, let's say upstate New York, Buffalo, New York, right? You can still buy a house out there in some places for 40, 60, 80,000, you know? Uh, but part of that, the reason that is, is because their economy is such that dictates that those are the prices, right? Our economy is such that we dictate the prices through what people can afford based on their, you know, debt to income ratio. So we see that it's, it's, that's the playing field that we're in. So if you're thinking about making a move out here, you wanna know more about the Seattle area, you're curious about certain neighborhoods, what your lifestyle might look like, give us a call, shoot us a text, reach out. We can't help you if you don't reach out. We love connecting with people every day. So uh, if you're thinking about it, reach out to us. And uh, if you've got, you know, leave us down below. And if we missed something that you're thinking about, if you're considering uh, something that you looked up that you Googled and you're like, hey, what about this? Drop it in the comments. Give me a call. Let me know. Let me know what other videos that you want to that you want to see things that you're curious about. We're always so glad to connect and we'll see you in the next video. All right. Talk to you.